Greetings in the name of the Most High. Uh, yes, an unusual time for me to be broadcasting. Uh, usually I chase the vampires around in the middle of the night. and uh, But now we're going to have a st- little stealth broadcast here. We're not going too long because we've got, you know, things going on. But I've got uh, Govinda with me here in the studio. Hey, uh, hey, hello, everybody. And greetings in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, in the name of Jesus. Hey, we're not that far away uh, from each other t- uh, today. No, <laughs> no, no, not at all. I'm, I'm, I'm literally two not feet. Just, I'm in the studio. I'm, I'm physically present. Right. Um, so, so, uh, and he's got the dogs uh, the clamoring dog. around. They're always in the studio. So, what we want to do is just do a real quick kind of an update of you were we were talking uh just earlier about uh, how we're all kind of beat up from you know being at this for i don't know i don't even want to count the years anymore but we're all you know to not be so hard on ourselves mm-hmm. right because we are we were there on point you know way before a lot of other people got there they they have yet to to burn out yeah but uh a little interference coming in hmm, where's that coming from something Oh, oh. Th- that's the dog is there. The ah, sorry. The dogs are demanding attention from Govinda because he's he, it's something new, <laughs> something new in the house. Yeah. But the people are really um, that are really beat up right now. You know, this this will be you know a little encouragement for us all because it's okay to to acknowledge that you've 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 been you've been, stayed the course. You've been on the course for a long time. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, the thing is right now is that um, everybody that has been on point, you feel it. You know, everybody that has been doing what it is that the Father has given you to do, you've you've taken hits and you've you've it's it's been hard. You know, it's been hard to stay the course. It's been lonely for a lot of you. You know, you've 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 many cases been at it by yourself. Maybe you've had a partner there with you. But for the most part, you've had to tread a, a lonely journey, you know, following and doing what God told you to do with very little um, uh, reward in the natural for your efforts. Oftentimes, you've actually just taken <clears throat> insults and hits for just doing uh, a service unto people and being a help and, and uh, blessing people and praying for people. So, you know, all of that is just to say that in, in, uh, in the world of logic and reason and civility, mm-hmm. These are things that will drive a normal person insane. So, you know, that being the case, and then many, many years of, of the accumulation of that, it's hard. And, and, you, can, and you need to, to actually acknowledge that, too, because sometimes, you know, the world we live in, people don't want to show that they have a problem, that they have an issue, that they're taking their hits, that it's, that's difficult. But it is, it is. And, you know, we've... We've been tracking, we, all of us have been tracking together and we've all made a commitment together to do something, um, you know, in the realm of the Spirit as well. And God has been bringing us together. And the more that we've got uh, organized and the more that we have started to take up different areas and different challenges, the more that the enemy is galvanizing his forces to come after you and to attack you in every possible place he can, whether it is your health or your family, or your resource base, or your mind, or your rest, your sleep, um, <clears throat> you know, whether it is uh, just in the projects that you try to do. How many of you out there, if you try to take something on, it just seems like it just gets bogged down in molasses. It doesn't matter what it is. You know, that is, a, that is a spiritual attack of the enemy, where the enemy just basically tries to to put everything into a quagmire so you can't move forward on anything because that's just the uh, overall directive that the enemy's put and instructed uh, on your life for both spiritual and human agents. So these are all things that are part and parcel of our journey. But right now, this is kind of just a pause where Zeph and I are getting together. And first of all, listen, you're all right. Um, You're more than all right. You're on track. You're on the course. And um, and God is 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 happy with you. He's pleased with you for for what you've been doing as you've been keeping the faith and you persisted. You know that we talked about this a little bit on a twenty on twenty show. But to him who overcomes, and we also talked about there's an element in there of to him who persists. 
you know, you've got to persist, you've got to keep going. But it doesn't mean that, you know, we don't take our hits along the way. So it, there is an accumulation, and, and we are war-weary along the way, but um, but God is with us in this. Yeah, I mean, the endeavor that we take on, well, what is it? Okay. Well, we lift up Jesus Christ, for one thing, which is one thing that you do that is, you know, still the most re- one of the most rebellious things, if not... It is actually the most rebellious thing you could do because it means that you're not beholden to the world system. It's like putting a big middle finger up in Satan's face in a way. You're not, you've been bought and paid for and you are not, uh, you owe them nothing. Yeah. And the the worlders call us the rebellious ones in their circles. Right. So So this is, this is, uh, at the same time, you're walking free and whenever, you know, free, there's freedom, there's, there's people that attack it. And they don't want people free. As you can see in our political struggle, just in that alone, it seems like the freedom lovers versus the enslavers. Yeah. Like two completely opposite forces. And um, so, you know, one of the things that we've done and Govinda's done and I've done and others over the last, you know, 15 years, whatever, has been to um, expose the enemy, what the enemy does. I mean, we're talking about you know, human trafficking and slavery, and we were talking about the spiritual warfare and gang stalking, mm-hmm. which is a huge, I'm, I'm going to be doing a show on that. I've been uh, preparing for it, and uh, because there's a lot of you that really need, I think, some input there. But I mean, for now, we're just going to look at an overview of everything. Uh, satanic abuse, satanic ritual abuse, mind control, MK Ultra. Uh, dark nefarious uh, programs um, within the government, uh, false flag terror. No one really knew that back in, you know, we knew a little bit of it in the 90s, but it really came to to, to the forefront uh, after 9-11. Yeah, yeah. After 9-11, a lot of things came clear, but it didn't all come clear. And then now, now where we are is we're kind of at the end of the road. I mean, all of this, you know, f- let me just give you an example. So you, I go off and shoot my mouth off on WWCR and, um, say, RBN Broadcasting and then International Satellite that Frankie had all three of those set up at one, at one point, and then the regular podcast. Okay, so, you know, so they are listening because mm-hmm. there weren't that many of us. And they're tagging and flagging and, you know, do all the things they do was happening back in like 2002, 2003, 2004. And, um, you know, there, there was, uh, stalking. There was, um, you know, some very untoward things that would occur, to, you know, that, that today I think, um, would be a lot harder for those things to occur because it's not like they can get us into a corner, mm-hmm. you know, get two or three people over here. Then there's another thousand that pop up over there. So back then, though, you could put two or three of us in a corner. Yeah. You could isolate a couple of us. So they would start sending in all these handlers and controllers, some of which were also fellow broadcasters. Um, anyway, it all became a big fight and became a big war. Several traps yours truly avoided, or you wouldn't be hearing from me. There were traps set. There were all kinds of things that, you know, all kinds of um, oppression, uh Stalking, uh, and yes, we do have a. Can we hold that up for a few minutes? Just, uh, um, yeah, we're going to try to shield that sound out. These do a good job of shielding sound yeah. out, but even that we can't really overcome. But we're going to see if we can get just a few minutes to keep on going here with us. Yeah. <clears throat> and I remember that I encouraged Govinda to get involved in broadcasting himself. And podcasting, of course, being Govinda, he, he, he was itching to do it. And, and he got in there, and, and then he realized he would say, you know, I just did an hour talk on Faith Mix, but then it was eight hours of, of payback. Oh, yeah. No, the, it, <laughs> so here's the thing. See, even, even, even one reason why, you know, why we, why we did um, faithmix.com instead of as the primary, and we didn't, and we didn't rely on these third parties because we, you know, God just kind of quickened us early on because all these third party sites would start shadow banning you or would start turning the volume down on you. So as soon as you would get traction and things would start moving on those places, 
um, they would just start to erode off of and just knock people off and not people would not see your information. So the site itself, I mean, we've had multiple DNS attacks. Um, t- the site's been taken down. It, it's it's completely just patched together by bailing wire right now. We need to do a complete overhaul. But still, you know, it was to have a landing page somewhere because at least there was something that, that wasn't, um, <clears throat> that, that, could be at some place that we actually had at some internet property where mm-hmm. people could land on and try to, to go from there. But the thing that we kind of saw and realized too is how all of these, you know, as the as the internet has continued to go forward, there's the the people that can grab the power of the the control of the thought. There's no there's no free flow of dialogue and thought and exchange and meeting of the minds or anything like that. No, it's the the push and the larger thing is thought control, um, thought police, um, you know, mm-hmm. enforcing a particular The, the rise of the uh, professional trolls. Then absolutely the we, we professional did, troll. They were around about back in 2002, 3, 4, but those days they would send them in literally. Oh, physically. It's, a blitz, it's a blitzkrieg. So physically. Now, and it's, it's both to pump up and to tear down right. a particular viewpoint that they find as uh, unprofitable or unuseful for whatever it is that they're doing. I'll give you an example. So, for example, if they want to push a particular narrative, what they'll do is, and you can do this through, you can do this using bots, you can do this using um, um, <clears throat> uh, actual people, but then what they'll do is they'll inflate the views of a particular um, a particular something that's published, and they'll give it a whole lot more views. Because the same way that we see the views get turned down, they turn up the views on something else. So it looks like, oh my gosh, there's there's three hundred thousand, there's a million, there's two million people that have watched this video. Y- yeah, it's robots. But and then at the same time too, they they pump up the. Uh, the um, uh, the comments. So what they'll do is they'll they'll just ev- so then what it does now what does it do to you? It makes you feel right. like oh my gosh I'm in this this real small fringe of people that have some question about this. There must be something wrong with me. There must be something off with right. me. So and then at the same time too when you put out a viewpoint that is logical in line with the scriptures, in line with what it is that God's told you. And, and, and then what do they do? Right away, they're just waiting there to pounce. Mm-hmm. And when they pounce, they pounce in mass so that they have one, two, ten people, dozens that will jump onto something. Or one guy with five IDs. You know, five that. different IDs that will just sit there all day and just be That's reinforcing it. his own viewpoint. Right. So so all of that is is now... You know, all of this is just part and parcel of what it is when you get involved in that in that world. If you're going to be in there, now the thing, the way to go forward there, if you if God's put it on your heart to speak and to publish and to bring things out, is kind of the instruction that we were given right on. Is you you just put it out there on the way that God gives it, and the results are in God's hands. But you just got to just do and just put that out there. Well, for example, you know, here's here's how the Lord does it. Okay, so let's say they go ahead and, you know, they've had me kind of blocked and banned for, I don't know, like, you know, 15, 16 years that there's been a an issue that if, let's say, somebody uploads something and then let's say they take my, they download my audio, then they upload it on their own. Yeah. It will thrive. And so that's how we've kind of lasted. We have multiple platforms, multiple uh, opportunities, and then people replay them. And as they do that... It just spreads and grows, and, and it, it doesn't stop. They can't stop that so from happening. Decentralization. Give, you, give yeah. an example of Trish. And this is silly, but, I mean, Trish is just, you know, she's around, so they know her. And uh, she did this uh, video of, of Alex Jones's um, contest. I think it was, uh, what was it? Uh, uh, we love our Muslims or whatever, you know. What's it called? We love our Somalis. Anyway, she it in, entered the contest. We shot. I shot a little video of her, and d- did a little directing of her. And, and I, I thought it was just really pretty awesome. Actually, I really, really loved it. And put some music for her to sing uh, to. I, not the, the music wasn't too complex. It was just a real simple, fun thing. But she really hit it out of the ballpark. Now, on her site, I think she put up a site on YouTube, and it got something like three thousand views you know tops but it was tied into this contest they were all getting some pretty good plays Mm -hmm. then she says that she had a friend who mirrored it 
And there's like, you know, it's like, you know, 50, 60, 100,000, whatever, you know, plays. And, um, and, and then back to her, it, she can't get above. And she's had people try to click this on and click it on. And it doesn't move the dial, not even one play. Yeah. Even though mul- many of us have gone and tried to move it above the word is now, none of us get any credit for those. It's like it's it's frozen. Yeah. No, I, I've 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 screenshotted um, other people where they've had more shares than they've had um, plays. Right. Right. You know right, what I mean? It's, right. It's, right. So so which you know if in the world of the social media. You know, one share is worth 10 likes. Uh, one like is worth 10 views. So, I mean, so you're talking just if somebody actually takes the time to share it, that's mm-hmm. a very, that's a very deep so th- that, level That's of just a kind of a surface thing. I mean, yeah. but then there are, you know, handlers, controllers, assassins, uh, gang stalkers, gang stalking, remote stalking, remote viewing stalking. Uh, there's uh, surveillance stalking. All that's going on at the same time. Mm. All because of little old Jesus. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so that's, and that's the thing. You know, because here's the other thing. Because you're not so, in a church, here's, right? Yeah, here's the other thing that's so amazing. In the world, all of them are trying to say, look over here, look over here, look at me, look at me, look yeah. at me. And they're all just out there just vying for attention. You, child of the living God, you're just happy just to do whatever God has for you. But they're all trying to watch you. And you and they're all, but they don't want you to know that everybody's watching you and everybody's watching what you're doing. But they are. Mm-hmm. And they don't want that which is in you to get out, and they don't want that which is in you to get traction. Because the more traction that it gets, the more that it moves, the more that it collapses their house of cards. So, yeah, but they can do nothing about miracles. Let's no, say you get a mir- you, I've listened to people and gotten a healing. And when they were talking about something unrelated to my illness or whatever, yeah. people have gotten that here. We're talking about some like the weather, and they go, "I got a healing! Hallelujah! Praise God!" You know, and it's like so that's non sequitur, yeah. and so they can't follow that. No, and and that's this is where too. Now this is again down to how we approach things. So the child of God, you you flow with the Spirit, and Jesus talked about this in John chapter three with Nicodemus. The children of God are like. Uh, they're like the wind. They flow wherever the Spirit leads them and guides them. And just as you can't, you can see the effects of the wind, but you can't control the wind and you can't, but it is what it is. And so for us, as we do the things that God has for us to do, the result of that is that it has the effects that God wants it to have. And this is where, as the world is always trying to put a box so it can put us in there and control us, we flow through all of that. And as we flow through all of that, God accomplishes his results. The ultimate example of that is, is Jesus and his life on the earth. You know, when he was here and he was walking around and they kept trying to control him, they kept mm-hmm. trying to get him to do different things. You remember with the he feeds the 5,000, they want to go try to make him king. Come on, you know, I got voters. You know, it's just like, he's yeah. like, no, he's like, I'm, that's not what, it, he just went from among them. So every time they tried to create a box for him, tried to kill him, tried to, to, to corner him, it was not until for him, and when he decided, because it was, he even said, you know, it's, it's, it's I, God's given me this, I, I can, I lay down my life of my own accord, and I can take it up again. And when he made the decision, yep, this is it, this is time, and I'm going to Jerusalem on purpose for this reason, to give my life for our salvation, for our redemption, for the, whole world. for the whole world. I'm doing this, that on purpose. Nobody took his life. He gave his life for us. Amen. And so, so, but in that whole thing, all the way along the way, there were so many different boxes, traps, things that were set there. And what did Jesus, how did he live? I only do what I see the Father doing. I only speak the words that I hear from the Father. So he was about his Father's business. So that is the, <clears throat> this is this place of being in the vine, to be in the vine, to be, to, to, and then what we do flows from him. And that's that place of connection. This is where we're praying continually. This is how that flow happens. This is how we live while we're here on the earth. And what the world wants to do is, first of all, if it can't get you to become part of their system, then it's going to try to compromise you. If it can't compromise you, then it's going to try to stick you out in the middle of nowhere and keep you from having a voice or keep you from having any impact. And if it, can't do, and if it can kill you, it'll try to do that too. So all of these things then also require for the child of God to, my people perish for what? 
for lack of knowledge. So we, we, God wants to quicken you so that you know what's going on, so that you also know how you're supposed to respond. Because there's times, too, where God's giving you instruction, and there's times where it's like, there, there are definitely times to fight. There are other times where he would have you slip from among them. There's other times where he'll hide you, you know, in the shadow of his wing. There's other times. So it's not a one-size-fits-all. It's a flow with the Spirit and allow for him to show you in that moment what you are to do. So even now, I was telling Zeph about, you know, just another situation on the way over. There's the, God's given me a very specific instruction about another situation and it's it's not something that um, it it comes from him, and it's an approach to how to deal with a particular situation. Because you're gonna need in the day that we're moving into, and we're already in right now, you need wisdom. If any man lacks wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives to all men generously without finding fault. If you lack, and we all lack without God, yeah. ask him. And he'll show you and he'll instruct you because you need that to move through the time that we're in. Because a lot of people will perish. A lot of people will be assassinated in either the realm of their mind, the realm of the spirit, physically, you know, all of those things. When we check out, we want it to be because that's God's timing for us to check out. And that's God's timing for us to lay down our lives of our own, of, of his direction, and not because the world is trying to snipe you. Well, you know, there's... Um Another example of this is that we started, uh, you know, having the prayer group of 20 on 20 uh, to end human trafficking and modern day slavery and to bring awareness to the problem worldwide. And, you know, it, and we've seen the topic grow from, you know, basically nowhere to now. I just saw like two or three different TV shows. Mm -hmm. They're talking about it. They're having, they're, we know how much money is involved. We see that it's the number one industry in the world it has been for thousands of years uh, all of these things coming out into the light uh were not there a few years ago no it, w it was not there it was not being discussed i mean they were discussing secret societies and uh you know i suppose the satanic rituals and and um you know heinous murders and you know criminality of, on, on every level and uh, then the handlers and controllers and the and the trolls were all trying to tell people there's nothing to see here. Of course. The more that they do that, the more everyone's looking. Now everything is out in the open. Yeah. And we rode that wave. Well, I guess the beginning of that really of, of when people say the the Great Awakening, the Great Awakening really happened for a lot of people at 9-11. Hmm. That was it. That was like the most awful thing that anyone's ever done to us. And, and you know what I'm talking about. We're talking about the, the real players involved. And, you know, we just had to get our minds around, like, one level, then another level, then another. You know, we're being betrayed. They're spraying us with chemtrails. They're poisoning our bodies. They're having all the wars are fake. Mm -hmm. And they're all just designed as, as human sacrifices. The abortion mills. The, on and on and on and on. Yeah. And then finally, now we've arrived at the topic of cannibalism. And... Believe me, folks, there's not much more to go after you get to cannibalism. <laughs> I mean, I'm serious. There's not, I don't think that, but, but I'm open to another revelation, but how many cannibals there are mm. and who they are and where they are and how the human trafficking is part of the cannibalism and it all connects. Yeah. And interestingly enough, geopolitically, it connects at the border where 80% of these kids are, have no parents with them. They're just adults that are traffickers and, and other, other, other adults that, that have no connection to them. They're making all this political hay, and it's all based on lies. And, um, but we do have some problems ahead, Govinda. You know, I'm watching mine. Here's mine. Yeah. yeah. Here's yours. Yeah. Look, here's your light and yeah. mine. <laughs> Pretty cool. Yeah. We're right. trying out a new interface here that I'm, I got so I could go on the road with it. And um, it's showing my meter yeah. here. Um, there's Govinda's meter yeah, there. It's so pretty, two, pretty smooth. Two mics. I yeah. don't know what this is. I guess that's a master out. Okay. Okay. So anyway, um, sorry, a nerd. I had a nerd nerd fart right there. <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> but anyway, uh, so uh, so so here's my my opinion of it at yeah. this point of what we've been doing. It's it's really you know at this point I'm ready to double down. Yeah. I'm ready to go full tilt, full truth. Yeah. Because there is no place to run, 
and no place to hide. Absolutely, absolutely. You know, here's here's the other thing. Absolutely, if you if if the place. Okay, let's use the example of the the Philistines and then the Israelites. And here's you got David and you got Goliath. You have that that exchange about to, about the, you have the champion of the enemy coming out there and taunting the people of God. You know, every day. Every the the end result of not taking that on head to head and going after it is slavery is is being dominated by your enemy and there is this thing of like what david had to do was he had to believe god mm-hmm. i mean he had to be, he and he knew he had some experiences with god so he knew the one that he trusted in and faith is built you know, in the experiences too, because you've gone through some things with God. Every person that's listening to this, you've gone through some things with God, and you you know that He's faithful. You know that He's there. You know that He's going to back you up, and you know that you're flowing with Him. So, the for us to double down is basically for us to say, "Okay, Lord, we're all in. This life and this window of time here is about Your plan, Your purposes. So You show me, You lead me, You guide me, and I will do what You have for me to do." But there is nothing else. There is no, there is nothing else besides his plan and purpose. There is nothing else. There's all these other things that we might do, or think, or say, or or have ideas or intentions for this life. Those are all secondary. And God knows. Listen, God knows you have desires in your heart. God knows there's things that you have that are natural and all that. But He's already given you the instruction there in in, in Matthew seven. He said, just consider the birds. You know, you've He's got this. Actually, the Matthew six. Um, you know, you've you've. He knows, and he'll take care of your needs. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. That's the place that you put your effort. That's the place you put your energy. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And out of the overflow of that, and the overflow of his love into your own life, then you love your neighbor as yourself. You know, it's, it's, so yeah, absolutely. The place to keep going is just, you double down. You double down on, on God's purpose. Yeah, and the thing is, is everyone has a different purpose. It might be for us to broadcast right now. It might be for someone else to go uh, talk to someone about the gospel and, and, and do a Bible study with them. Yep. It might be to visit somebody in the hospital. It might be like we're, we're having an intervention prayer right now for um, uh, John and Violet and the uh, Little Treasure Orphanage that we have. We, you know, I'm not going to go into it right now. We're yep. just going to be quiet about that. But... Uh, that's a that's a concern right at the moment. Do we have an update? Okay, Trish has an update. Live update. Ah, prayers. I've just been uh, chatting with Violet and John, and the situation is pretty desperate. Uh, they really need prayers for their protection and their safety. Uh, they're going to try to move secretly, and um, right now their water has been shut off. The children are very thirsty. There are 35 children... And uh, we're going to help them get some uh, get some help, some people that can help move them secretly. Uh, they don't want their enemies to know where they're going to end up. No, and they we got to you know, prayer cut, for their protection the and the, their secrecy yeah. uh, for the move. They're going to they're going to try to do it all at once. Okay, we're not going to go into it too much because there's, you know, at this point the enemy can just watch what they're doing online, and we can't have that right now. So, yeah. so, uh, so you see out there, you see what's going on. But you, all you, safe. you, all you, safe you right see, uh, you see how it is in the world, right? I mean, so you see that uh, we're all connected here, whether it be in Pakistan, or Sri Lanka, or India, or Africa, wherever it is, uh, you know, Canada, um, anywhere. We are all connected. This is all just like you know God's purpose yep. all over the place, and one of it is to save these children. Yeah, yeah. And Trish, can I have some water? Speaking of water. Yes. And so, um, yeah, yeah, and the thing is too is that is that with with the body of Christ, when one part suffers, all parts suffer. With the body of Christ, when one part does well, every part does well. So there's so we have this link in the realm of the spirit, in the true body of the living God. You know, and this is this is contrary to the um the the trap of the of what the church system was set up to try to enslave yeah. and to keep people from moving forward in what the true body of the living god was and is and always will be so that's that's been part of the trap that's there but when you look and see what's happening in, with the body of christ um yeah i mean god is as we're all on the same page 
And you'll see that. You'll notice that when you meet a brother and sister of, of God. But, um, yeah, this, this thing right now is, is there are some very real... Um, there's some very real struggles that are there. There's some very real things that are on the table that need to be dealt with. And, uh, you know, and there's some challenges. Dasha's trying to eat your cookie. I noticed that. She's, she's one track mind. So, yeah, so this is, um, you know, we're just, we'll, we'll ask for your prayers. Uh, we're not going to do it right now collectively. We're just trying to kind of going underground here with this. But uh, for those children to have water, oh, man, you know, shutting off the water, that's really. Well, and let's, and let's say this one, too. The enemy of your soul does not play fair. So, you know, if that's something that you've got to, you know, and see, one, one of the challenges that I've always had is that we see things through our own filter. We see things through the way that we would do things. And, mm-hmm. and the enemy of our soul does not play fair. See, so this is why, too, when, when, when uh, Paul wrote and he said, you know, the kingdom of God is not a matter of talk but of power. What will be part of the, the closure of the matter is going to be that the greater power, greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. Right, amen. And Correct. one thing that God is doing and will do and will bring in with the wave that we've been riding mm-hmm. is the greater power overcomes and destroys and decimates uh, a system that's at enmity with God. And so the, there, is this, there is this element, because if the world, by hook or by crook, can do what it does, it's going to do it, and it doesn't care about fair play. It doesn't care about right. it. So, it's, so, you, so being able so to... don't look for fairness out there. Yeah, if exactly. If they're going to kick you below the belt, you go, oh, praise God, that's what's supposed to happen. Now, I want to get back to the thing that a lot of you are tired and you know, beat yeah. up because you've been on the tr- path for a long time or you've gotten old w- while doing it. Um, so, you know, we all understand. Uh, okay, there's, I've really thought about this last, like, 48 hours. And my recommendation is what I just said to double down. Yeah. Even if you're uh, 68 years old, you're 72, you're 80, I don't care. It's to double down and there's no, the, because the alternative is, especially if you're older, and it doesn't apply to Govinda at this point, but it, it will eventually, uh, the alternative is basically death. You know what I mean? It's just sagging into that that lo- that good night. That's that's not who we are. We go, you know. Abraham was tapped when he was eighty. You know. Well, and it's also um, another part ready of, to go. Yeah, another part of it too is also how we view these things, because um, sometimes it's not life happening to you, but life happening for you. And and so when right. God is sometimes what happens is. You know, there's a reason the scriptures also say, and this is, you know, it's something that it says, and we got to have a mindset change to be able to take it, but mm-hmm. is consider a pure joy when you face trials and tribulations of all kinds, because the, the testing of your faith builds perseverance, perseverance, character, and character, hope, and the hope doesn't it does. disappoint. And, and so we, you know, for the child of God, when you go through these things, there's something else that God is doing. I mean, so for example, for <clears throat> those of you that have had a bunch of blocks and a bunch of series of blocks well also know that god is there as well and sometimes god is also allowing for that to keep you out of certain things or to keep you away from certain traps sometimes something might close down but there's a greater purpose that's there and the enemy doesn't necessarily see the bigger purpose that god is doing so he thinks that he's shutting you down but in fact it's another door opening, it's another up. Door opening up and yeah. god is yeah. setting something up and if you were in that other thing you wouldn't have the space for the next thing that God is doing. So there are complexities and layers to this where this is where you have to hear the voice of the Spirit because if you don't listen to the voice of the Spirit in the way that God is leading and guiding you, you'll be lamenting when when you should be rejoicing. You'll be you'll be, you know, upset and perplexed when if you just let your focus readjust, you'll see what's beyond that. So I think right now for I know for some situations that God is just shaking some things off of people's lives where you see it as a, a, a door closing, but in fact is just shaking some things off of you so that you can be freed up, so you can double down, and that you can go into something different, and you can go into something new. And each one has a different path. Absolutely. And so, you know, they're, they're, and all those paths are valid. And, and like I said, if they put us all in the same path in the same room, in the same, in the same dorm room or whatever, it'd be fish in a barrel time, baby. They would just be able to pick us off. Yeah. So that's why that doesn't happen. But there will be a time of gathering. 
and um, it will be a, a, a joyous time, and it will be awesome. At this point, though, we're kind of at the pinnacle. I mean, I, you know, I guess what's really happening is this unveiling of what was hidden for so long or what people didn't want to talk about, and they essentially kept it hidden. And I see people flipping out right and left and going crazy, and it's because I think they just didn't think that any of this stuff would be coming out, and they're worried about their culpability, you know? Yeah, so, absolutely. So, so, so yeah, you know, there's a lot of guilt out there. People feel guilty, which is not necessarily a bad thing. Yeah. Well, and this it's not is not bad it, to repent. It's absolutely, it's an opportunity. This is the window of time right now for people to have the chance to repent. Yes. You know, this is, that's, this is that window. If, you, if you're listening in and you're a worlder and you're wondering what's going on and you're worried about all the rest of this, this is your short window. Golden opportunity. Golden opportunity <laughs> to yeah. repent. And this is it, really. Because the thing is... is Walk that, with a living God. Yeah. Because, rather than, you know, worrying about man. Because, yeah, if you miss your window, you don't know if you're going to get another one. See, that's the other thing, too. Sometimes people think they can just dial up God whenever. And no, if you miss the window that you have, you don't know when you're going to get another shot, if you'll get another shot. Your next breath is not guaranteed. So, so this is really that window. Now, there's a couple things in the, in the realm of the Spirit when when cuz this this life is is temporal this life is transitory in the realm of the spirit people are exactly who they are and they're completely revealed for what they are in this realm people you know they have a human body and they have they have they have other things that sort of um you know it, it there's a, there's a there's a layer between who they are and what they are within and a lot of people aren't a match between who they are within and who they are without and who they present themselves to be without but there's a couple of things. When you go into the next dimension, you will be exactly who you are and who you've, who you've prepared yourself to be and what's been your, your heart and your focus. And the other layer is that um, there is the, the consequences. That's one thing that people fear in this life. You know, people fear repercussions. And when that's taken away, because in the next dimension, you basically go to where it is that you've been prepared to go in your choice. You, you will be in that place of the consequences, good or bad, reaping what you've sown for all eternity of your choice. So here, two things that will end up keeping people from moving forward in the worst sort of things is being revealed for who they are and the consequences and the fear of consequences for their actions and for their choices. So, you know, that's why the enemy tries to keep everything hidden, tries to keep everything in the dark, because, and that's why they've tried to keep a lock on all of these things, whether it's the justice system, whether it's the information systems, whether it's the, uh, <clears throat> whether it's trying to make laws, you know, and then say, okay, evil is good and good is evil. That's, that's something that they've tried to push. So they've tried to say the sun, um, you know, sets in the north and rises in the south. It's because, you know, they, they wanted to, to try to do that, even though that doesn't change the absolute reality. But, you know, in the end, here's, yeah, you want to align with what God's doing. Yeah, and here's like a little scripture here, Matthew ten twenty eight, And fear not them which kill the body, but are not Absolutely. able to kill the soul, but rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Um, in other words, the eternal is, uh, we are eternal creatures, you know, we are eternal we are set free from the from the from the bondage of sin by the blood of Jesus Christ that paid for our uh i like to say contract our slave contract mm -hmm. so that's been done and you know most christians really understand that um uh, you know when 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 this scripture says that can kill the body body is really another word for materialism or your material existence and your mm -hmm. things you have things you don't have your bank account whatever who can no worries about that it's really if it gets in the way of the soul or or fear him god who's able to uh, destroy the soul and uh do not it's it's really another way of saying don't fear the devil but fear god okay let me just keep there yeah. in a nutshell yeah. <laughs> okay. well yeah and and that's that's the thing that the so the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and knowledge and understanding. You know, you have to. So if you don't have that, and the world tries to um, tries to get people away from that reality, because if they can get people away from that reality, then they they go down another path, which is their own enslavement and their own destruction. So, no, absolutely, fear the Lord 
and keep his commandments and Ecclesiastes 12, end of the chapter, because this is the whole duty of man, because God's going to bring every work into judgment, whether Amen. it be good or evil. It's just reminding me when I talk to that priest, Catholic priest, is big in the L.A. Catholic Church, and he's, we're looking out the ocean, and he's having a few gin and tonics. And, but then again, you know, <laughs> gotta he's, he's Irish. <laughs> <laughs> so, and we're looking out there at the uh, the ocean, the beautiful Pacific down in uh, down in San Diego, and just looking out over the, the kids are playing in the water and surfing, and their their people are walking their dogs, and just the, that beautiful beach scene. And I go, look at all that abundance of the Pacific Ocean. I mean, it's just like, look at the possibilities. And he gets all pissed off. and He wants to punch me out. He goes, he goes you know, uh, a man still has to make a living, you know, screaming. And it's like, yes, oh, yes, we have to slave to someone to make a living somewhere. And we can't consider the limitless ocean and all the opportunities therein. We've got to get ourselves enslaved so we can... So that you can minister to us while you're drunk out of your mind. I mean, <laughs> well, you say, yeah, I understand that you've had to be a slave, my son. I've had to do awful things, Father. I've had to, you know, kill, steal, and destroy, uh, or they were going to take my uh, my house, my 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 hide, my uh, my coat, my something. They they're going to be mean to me. So I I had to. I I fully understand, my son. Say 50,000 Hail Marys, and off you go. Now, do you have, happen to have a little present for me, then? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and that's Thank all. you. I'll take that bottle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what's no, no. wrong, Father? Hey, Padre, what's wrong? Why, why do you drink so much? <laughs> okay, never mind. No, it's, 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 and, and it doesn't have to be, right? It's a little humor, right? Yeah. Okay. Well, and I, that's all based on, too, like... Babylonian mystery religion and Nimrod, and it goes back to that to get the confessional going so that they can keep sure. tabs on everybody. So well, that's, I, it's actually also part of Mithraism. I've, I've been, you know, I'm going to give you guys a little lesson on Mithraism uh, tomorrow, let's say. that We've got some big shows coming up, and uh, the Mithraism is just it's fascinating. It really is. The, the parallel for, for early Christianity, it was really a religion that was competing with early Christianity. And it, it had all kinds of like a little initiations you had to go through, and you had like seven levels of initiations uh, before you could be considered part of the body. But it, there were things that parallel the Bible. Yeah. And and you know some people use it to denigrate, you know, which it doesn't do at all. It's just very interesting uh, that this is something that is not really talked about that much. And there was a lot going on in the um, Middle East around Jerusalem back, yeah. in, back in those days and in Greece. And, uh, okay, so we have to wrap it up now, but uh, we're just saying hello to you all and just wanting to encourage you. And, um, you know, we love you. We're praying for you. And we just hope that uh, you just don't get down if you're tired, beat up. And, you know, if, a lot of you just, I can't take it anymore and all that. I, we've all been there. But we're here to say... Um, God will give you the strength if he hasn't already. Absolutely. So, so double down, ride the wave, keep your eyes on Jesus, um, and just know that also, too, that what you're going through and what you're facing is, um, you know, this is, this is the entire body of Christ on the earth that God is here at this time for his purposes is going through this at the same time. So for you to uh, persist and to overcome and just, you know what, be, and, and that's the thing too, take it before God in prayer, because when you do feel overwhelmed and all the rest of it, take it before him, because he is your advocate, he is the judge, he's the one that's in control, and he's the one that gives the power, and, and when we pray, we are bridging between the realm of the spirit and the natural, and that's part of what God wants you to do while you're here. So yeah, we love you guys, God bless you, and um, yeah. We'll be back. Yeah, we'll be back. <laughs> Bye. God.